Crossfield discharges are efficient plasma sources. These can be used in various applications like hall thrusters and surface coating with magnetron sputtering devices. When we examine the idea of electrical cratering, this is often given in the context of huge interplanetary discharges. What may be overlooked is the role that planetary magnetic fields play in creating secondary effects through magnetic dipole discharges. Before we discuss the effects a magnetic field has, we need to first discuss the properties of the cathode. Specifically, a cold cathode. This is a cathode that is not electrically heated to generate electrons. The surface of cold cathodes can emit secondary electrons at a ratio greater than unity. An electron leaving the cathode will collide with neutral gas molecules. This collision may just excite the molecule, but sometimes it will knock an electron free to create a positive ion. The original electron and the freed electron continue towards the anode and may create more positive ions. The result is for each electron that leaves the cathode, several positive ions are generated that eventually crash onto the cathode. Some crashing positive ions may generate secondary electrons. The discharge is self-sustaining when for each electron that leaves the cathode, enough positive ions hit the cathode to free on average another electron. The resulting strong electric field near the cathode accelerates ions to a sufficient velocity to create free electrons from the cathode material. Although creating the initial space charge and the first arc of the current through the tube may require a very high voltage. Once the tube begins to heat up, the electrical resistance drops, thus increasing the electric current through the lamp. This means less voltage is now required to maintain the same current. A cross-field configuration is where the electric and the magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. The simplest cross-field discharge consists of a permanent magnet, which functions as a cold cathode, and a cylindrical wall chamber as the anode. The cross-fields confine the electrons. In this example, we can see a probe is used to emit electrons, which become confined within the crossed field. It can be seen that the first order electrons travel along the dipolar field lines, perform small cyclotron orbits and drift due to the field gradient and curvature around the equator, which causes azimuthal offset of the bright flux tubes. Collisions scatter the electron orbits and produce a torus shape. If we examine the potential of the plasma in the cross field discharge, something interesting stands out. As we approach the magnet, radial potential drops strongly. This implies a radial electric field of an iron-rich plasma region. Electrons perform an E cross B drift and both ions and electrons are energized near the cathode. Since the magnetic potential is much lower than the measured potential, there must be a thin cathode sheath. Ions created at the sides of the disc are accelerated into the disc towards the cathode. Secondary electron emission is not only confined to the magnetic fields, but can arise on any electrode which is biased sufficiently negative. In this image, we can see a Langmuir probe to the right of the magnet, which is biased at minus 500 volts. The light in the flux tube of the magnet is due to the secondary electron emission. The emitted electrons are confined by the magnetic field and the negative magnetic potential. They ionize efficiently and enhance the ion impact on the magnet. The green color of the plasma in this region is distinctly different from the bluer color of an argon discharge. The cathode coating material, which is nickel in this case, is sputtered and ionized. These types of configuration are subject to various instabilities. There are drifts between the electrons and the ions, there is an unstable cathode sheath, and relaxation instabilities caused by ionization. When an iron-rich sheath is deprived of electrons, it oscillates at a frequency close to the iron plasma frequency. In this image, we can see an instability as measured by a number of probes. In the frequency spectrum, we can see many harmonic lines. The secondary harmonic is larger than the fundamental mode, which is commonly seen in an iron sheath instability. The frequency increases with discharge voltage, which determines the discharge current and plasma density. When the discharge voltage is increased, a new phenomenon arises, the formation of cathode spots and short duration arcs. These melt the surface material, 
ionize it and produce dense plasma with copious electrons which can enhance the cathode emissions by an order of magnitude. The spots are sub-millimeter size and occur at random location and times. The spot discharges change the properties of the magnetron discharge profoundly. The torus disk is gone. Instead, we now have localized patches of high density plasmas. As methyl uniformity guarantees that the electron drift closes around the magnet. For a localized discharge, the Hall current has a divergence and sets up a space charge field in the azimuthal direction which produces a radial electron drift. This causes the electrons to be energized and causes ionization which forms a highly conducting plasma channel to the chamber wall which is the anode. When a grounded probe is brought into the vicinity of the magnet, a spot discharge develops on the probe. Using a magnetic probe, the probe shaft carries the same current as the wire to the magnet. The measured anode spot current density is about 100 amps per millimeter squared, indicating a very high plasma density. The electrode material is melted, evaporated and ionized. The bright streaks you see in the image is due to the sputtered electrode material. The fast rising current of the spot discharges trigger high frequency ringing in the discharge current. Ringing oscillations up to several hundred megahertz have been observed. This I believe is important as Andrew Hall has pointed out that many of the surface features on Earth are likely created by an AC current. This may be one mechanism for creating short duration AC current through a magnetron discharge. It also shows that we need not consider the discharge to have occurred repeatedly to the surface from a distant object, but that instead it is possible that simply the presence of a body at a significantly different potential could be enough to trigger the initial electron avalanche, which then creates highly energized plasma around the body, which in turn creates secondary discharges to the surface of the cathode. When we examine the cathode spotting, we can see many comparisons to scarring we see on the Moon, Mars and other bodies. But what exactly is the difference between anode spots and cathode spots? How are they created and what effects do they leave behind? Is it possible to examine the scarring on other moons and planets and identify them as either anode spotting or cathode spotting? This is something that we will examine in the near future. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.